Okay. Here's our equation. The le or our problem. There's a word problem. The length of a rectangle is 12, is 12 centimeters greater than the width. And the area is 64 centimeters squared. So this is our equation up here. I wrote it down. It's going to be x times x plus 12 equals 64. And that's because width times length equals area. That's what we base it on. <clears throat> so here's our width, x, or I'm sorry, length. Same thing, just let me put the letters in the right order. Our leg, no, I was right the first time. Oh man, this could be another one. Width is x. Our length is width plus 12, so x plus 12 equals 64. Width times length equals area, okay? So I've written the equation. Let me make a little bit of room here. Now that we got that down, so I'm going to take this off because I don't need that anymore. I know I've got to figure out. So, two ways to solve this. One is a little more complicated. The other, we'll go over the complicated one first, and then the other one is a little bit easier. All right? So the first thing we have to do, this is a quadratic, so we got to kind of change the format of the example, of the equation. So I have x times x. To change it in the right format, x times x is x squared. Okay, x times 12 is 12x. So x squared plus 12x equals 64. And my last step is to set this to 0. So to do that, I have to subtract 64 on both sides. Okay, so that gives me x squared plus 12x minus 64, and that's 0, equals 0. Now, I just have to take this problem and factor it out and set it to 0. Okay, so the key is the numbers I choose, the two factors I choose, have to add up to 12, and when multiplied together, it gives me negative 64. And the key is the negative. So I know that my numbers are going to be a positive and a negative because my product has to be a negative 64. So to factor it first, I set up my little parentheses. x squared, so I know I have an x here and then I have an x here. Now my numbers have to add up to positive 12. One has to be positive, one has to be negative. And that's the key. So my positive number could be 16. My negative number is 4. Negative 4. That's because negative 4 times positive 16 equals negative 64. Positive 16 and negative 4 equals 12. Okay? And my final step, I have to set them both to 0. So to do that, That's x negative 16. That's not the answer. But to set this to 0, x is 0 when x equals positive 4. And that's my answer. x is 4. Okay? I get two answers, but I know this one is not the one I'm looking for because it's a negative. I need a positive number because I'm measuring area. So x is 4. 4 times 4 plus 12 is 16 equals 64. Okay? That's the complicated way. That's a little bit harder. And there's another way. And the other way is it's factoring, same thing. But now I just know that two numbers have to multiply to equal 64. So I could just go down the list. 1 times 64 equals 64. But I need a difference of 12 because x plus 12 is, is, my, is the solution I'm looking for. This is a difference of 64, that's it. So let's go to the next one. 2, 
2 times 1 equals 64, 2 times 32, but that is a difference of 30. That's not my answer. Uh, 3 times nothing. I'm not going to get 64 if I'm multiplying by 3. I'm looking for a whole number, so I'm going to try 4. 4, and we already discussed from the previous ones, 4 times 16 equals 64. And there it is. 4 times, again, I have choice. It's one of these two numbers. I know it's not 16, because 16 plus 12 and 16 times whatever that's going to be, uh, 28, is not going to be 64. But 4 times, well, plus 12 is, oops, let me just do 4 plus 12 is 16 equals 64. I hope that made sense, but that's pretty much it. All right? Okay, bye.